Hello, everybody, and welcome back into another playoff preview show here on the Hockey Raiders YouTube channel. We are down to the final two teams in the playoffs now. Uh, Tampa Bay Lightning there for the third straight year uh, in the finals. And then um, and we got the Avalanche in the, in the final for the first time since 2001, which is a long time ago. And, uh, you know, the <laughs> it, it's the Lightning, but it didn't look good after the first two games against the Rangers. But they're here again. And, uh, We'll see what happens once again to the final, see if they can win another Stanley Cup. But I'm joined in by Jim Bay and uh, Kerry Collins, who, of course, cover the Lightning and Avalanche, respectively. Um, thanks, guys, for coming on another preview. And um, it's going to be exciting to see these two teams that match up against each other. Absolutely. Looking forward to it. Yeah, for sure. I yeah, think so these like are two, two of the best teams from the regular season, too. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's it's. Well, I think I I predicted Avalanche in the final, but I I think I'm pretty sure I predicted the Florida Panthers here instead of the Lightning. But I mean, a lot of people thought the Panthers were going to go further. Um, so let let's get this started with the obvious uh, the superstars in this matchup. But uh, I mean, all of them have got kind of stepped up throughout. Uh, you got Nathan McKinnon, Randon and stepped in the last series. You got Landis Dog been playing really well as well. Uh, versus Steven Stamkos, Nikita Kucherov, and Andre Palat, which are the main guys that have been really stepping up the last few, um, especially in the series against the Rangers, because you know, Stamkos had two goals in the final game, um, really stepped up there. We'll start with you, Jim, on that. Uh, this matchup between, I mean, some of the best in the NHL in, uh, in stars. I mean, it's going to be a star-studded uh, final for sure. Oh, absolutely. And, uh, you know, all three of, you know, the lightning superstars did very well in the Ranger series. Um, Kucherov, Stamkos, Hedman, um, Palat was, uh, you know, definitely a big factor playing on the line with them. You know, th they'll be there. They're going to do just fine. Um, you know, whether or not they're going to be the difference in the series remains to be seen. It always seems like, you know, in these big things, we talk about how great these guys are and everything. And then, you know, here comes another guy rolling along that, um, you know, happens to get the, you know, the game winning goal or, or does something unexpected. But, uh, you know, I think, you know, for the lightning, you're, they'll, they'll play, they've been there, they've done it before, you know, they'll, they'll definitely carry their load, maybe even a little bit more in, in this Stanley cup final. Yeah. And Kerry, I mean, Nathan McKinnon stepped up huge in the last series against the Edmonton Oilers. Uh, Miko Rantanen finally came to play. He had a goal in every game. Uh, what do you think about this matchup? Uh, I mean, both both sides have really stepped up their game in the last series, um, with especially the Stars. But um, what do you think of this matchup? Yeah, I mean, they really needed that. Colorado did going in. I mean, Landeskog and McKinnon and McCarr had all been very sharp throughout. And then... Ranton and the only goal he had, I think, was an empty netter through the first two series. And then he, you know, really picked it up against Edmonton in that last series. So they are against a, D, uh, a team like Tampa. They're going to need, you know, as many guns firing as they can. I, I mean, the, the, the depth is really going to play a role for both these teams, I think. But especially for Colorado, just with this is easily the best defensive core and goaltender that they've played in the playoffs. I mean, and it's not even close. So the depth scoring for them is going to be more important than ever, I think, especially in this series. Yeah. And then we'll talk about that in a sec, but let's start with one that uh, is a big storyline going to this series is two guys that are pretty much similar players and what they bring to the team and uh, Nazem Kadri and Braden point. Uh, both have been injured. Um, Kadri was injured in the last, um, you know, I believe, it was against the Blues. They was, he was hurt there. Um, and then Braden Point's been hurt for the last series, too. Um, Jim, we'll start with you on, on Braden Point. I mean, there he hasn't been ruled out. He, you mentioned before recording that uh, he could have played Game 7 if it did go to a Game 7. He looks like he's going to play. But what do you think his impact will be on the lineup? Seeing he's been out for a while, he's kind of, I mean, coming off an injury, you never know what can come. What can happen after that? Uh, what do you think an impact he could have in this series? Yeah, I mean, the mystery is, you know, in the NHL system of not disclosing much about injuries, just how hurt is he? He's been skating for a while. Um, I, I think at the very least, um, there'll be an inspirational piece to the Lightning about having him back. 
Um, you, you can't just, you know, replace a guy who was your leading playoff scorer for the past couple of years, uh, and but they've done it well. I think he will he will play. He will have some kind of impact. I think they'll work him in slowly, um, even if it's just, you know, maybe a little bit more presence on the power play. Maybe he gets a few shifts off here and there. Um, you know, Coop, Cooper likes to juggle those lines anyway. Who knows if he's going to go 12 and six or 11 and seven on his offensive and defensive setups. So there's a lot of that, but, you know, I, I think just his presence is going to, you know, help out the, uh, the lightning, you know, off the ice and on the ice. I think he'll have a little bit of a presence in both. Yeah. Well, he's a big character guy too. Like, well, even when he got hurt there, he played, I didn't play, but he sat on the bench and he wanted, mm -hmm. he wanted to still yeah. be there. Uh, for the team. So uh, that's huge. Even, you know, him being just in the line, in the locker room. So I definitely agree with that. Kerry on the other side and Nazem Kadri, he's, it's not hundred percent that he'll play in this final, but he hasn't been ruled out. Um, what do you think if he does come back, does he first, does he come back? And if he does, um, how much of an impact will he have? Probably not going to be hundred percent if he does. Yeah, initially he got a little dinged up earlier in the playoffs, and what kind of knocked him out here was that hit from Evander Kane in, I think, game three. Um, yeah, it was against, against Edmonton. Oilers, yeah, not and, against the Blues. <laughs> but yeah, he um, – I, I don't know. Like, initially the all of the talk was he's done. Like, watch for him in the press box, you know. <laughs> so the series is over or the playoffs are over for him. And then it turned into him commenting on some social media posts saying, hey, you know, not so fast. And then people were kind of like, oh, maybe this isn't that bad. And then actually word comes out that he was skating today. So I would be surprised if, it, I mean, depending on how the series goes too, it's just, I'd be surprised if you don't see him in this series with mm -hmm. just sort of the developments that have happened over the last three days. Um, I mean, he's skating again. He's, and you know, he, he wants to play. I mean, <laughs> no, yeah. <laughs> after all those years in Toronto and then the past few years here, at, you know, with some of the heartache of the second round for Colorado, uh, this is really just, uh, you know, it's been a big destination for him. So if he can go at all, I mean, I'd be surprised if he didn't. And they, you know, they need him too. I mean, he's played a lot of games against Tampa Bay. He's played a lot of games against these guys. I mean, I think he's played north of 30 games against them. Um, uh, he likes to fire off a ton of shots. So <laughs> um, just having that threat and that, um, you know, his sort of annoying presence where he can get under the skid of some players and stuff too, that, you know, he just goes a long way for them. So, I, I mean, if he comes back, I think it'll be big, not, you know, just to get his skill, but also like emotionally people kind of rally around him on this team too. So I think it's probably a coin flip as to whether he comes back, but all of the signs are starting to point towards it. And I mean, if this series goes longer than, you know, four games or five yeah. games, I mean, he'll probably <laughs> be there for sure. It's just, can he get in there, you know, game one, game two, or game three? I don't know if he plays on Wednesday, but I'd be surprised just from the recent reports if he doesn't come back. Yeah. It's, it's crazy that they're both, similar type players and uh, their character and how they, you know, they impact the team. So um, we'll see if one of the one or both come back. I know points probably more likely as they sure. said, he could have played game seven. So he'll probably play on Wednesday and that, that's un not confirmed um, for what I could see, but um, we'll see. We'll see if they, these two can uh, make an impact in this series. I mean, regardless, both teams have really good depth. I mean, even without these two, they've gotten through it. They've been able to, I mean, the Lightning have been without points since the, since the first round, but uh, um, I believe. So, I mean, it's, it's going to be, it's going to be interesting to see how the depth can keep going if they can. Um, let's talk about that depth though. Um, the Avalanche have had contributions from a lot of their forwards. Uh, Lekkinen scored the game winner to bring him to the Stanley Cup final. Uh, Nikushkin's had some, has some goals throughout the playoffs. Comfort stepped up. Um, then on the Lightning side, Colton, Sorelli, and Nick Paul, Corey Perry. I mean, all these guys have come at different times. And I know, Jim, I believe it was you, Jim, that wrote a, a piece on the unsung heroes or mm -hmm. someone from the Lightning uh, writing, yeah, yeah. writing team did. Um, about the unsung heroes that have kept stepping up at different times, not just this playoffs, but in the past. 
Um, and that's why they're here. Uh, we'll start with you. Yeah, Jim, on this. Um, what do you think this depth can go against the Avalanche? Uh, can they push the push them over the top uh, in this final? Well, I think they're going to have to. Um, in, in the last series, the, the depth pieces weren't so much big on the scoring, but where they contributed was was keeping the Rangers big guns in check. And that's what guys like Sorelli and, you know, everybody who plays on who will play on his line with them um, are going to have to do the, the light of the avalanche are have just been tremendous on offense in these playoffs. And they are going to need to do that again if they if they have a chance in this series. They can't just sit back and let, you know, um, their goal, their wonderful goaltender, you know, bail them out. It, it's it's going to be, you know, a, a little bit more of that depth um, on the defensive end and the defense themselves having to do that job to keep the avalanche in check. Yeah, and that's that's but that's what the Lightning have done throughout. I mean, these guys just set different guys keep coming to, you know, stepping up at different times. And uh, they've been the difference a lot of the time throughout these two Stanley Cups and then um, coming back into the Rangers and, you know, being here now. Um, Kerry, on your side of the Colorado Avalanche, this is the first time they're in the final uh, for a long time. This is a long time coming. They're not as used to it as the Lightning are. Um, what do you think this depth is going to have? Are they going to have a huge impact or are they just going to have to go and hope that McKinnon and them uh, kind of carry them the whole way? Yeah, I mean, they've been kind of carried by that depth of the entire playoffs. I mean, they've got uh, – 16 different guys have scored a goal. I think 10 different guys scored a goal in the sweep against <laughs> of Edmonton. And, you know, like they're getting a lot from the defensemen, not just McCarr and Taves. I mean, Bowen Byram's got seven assists in the playoffs and, you know, he wasn't even really that active, uh, you know, at the start until Sam Gerrard got hurt. And Gerrard actually was scoring goals against – Nashville, which is something he never does in the playoffs. <laughs> and it's just, I mean, they're just getting it from a lot of different places. I mean, Eric Johnson has played for a hundred years and he scored a goal against the blues. And it's like, <laughs> uh, I mean, they're just getting it from so many different directions. And a lot of the attention, of course, probably rightfully so is on Kale McCarr and Nathan McKinnon, just because they've been so electric. I mean, Nathan McKinnon's played only 14 games. He's got 82 shots in the playoffs. It's yeah. just, he's, I mean, everything, is flying at the net from him. And, you know, most of them are going in. So <laughs> it's, uh, I, those guys, yeah. Um, those two in particular, McCarr and McKinnon, then, you know, you've got Landis God too, who's been great, but it's like, those guys are going to, that, that stuff's always going to be there. And that will usually get offset, especially in a series like this, that'll get offset by guys like Kucherov and Stamkos mm -hmm. and stuff. So they're going to need that depth. I mean, the biggest, example of the depth scoring that they got was that third game in Edmonton I, uh, against Edmonton, the first game of that series in Edmonton and the Oilers just, just shut those st uh, top line stars down, but Nakushkin gets two mm -hmm. and Comfort gets another one, you know? So it's like, they're getting them from these guys that those guys aren't going to score 30, 40 goals in a year or anything. Yeah. <laughs> they're, they're very time. They've been very timely. comfort has got a two goal game too in that uh, last series. So it's just, they're getting it from a lot of different people. And I think they're going to have to keep doing that. Are those guys going to have to carry them? I don't know, but as a group, you know, the sum has to be greater than the yeah. total, you know, of its parts. So that's just what they've been doing. So they're just going to have to keep doing that. Yeah. I mean, that that's, you know, make a good point with the superstars kind of probably going to cancel each other out in, in production. You're going to need the depth to kind of, push them over the top and change that. So we'll see who steps up and who doesn't. And uh, that's going to be interesting. Um, you mentioned the defense, uh, Kale McCarr, um, big, I mean, he's had a massive playoffs. I mean, he's on been compared to Bobby Orr and uh, guys like that has tons of points and doing it at both ends of the ice too. And uh, you know, the lightning have another guy that's similar to him. Uh, does it everywhere. <laughs> Victor Hedman um, does similar stuff. He's always there. He plays a ton. Uh, does it at both ends. He's won in Norris. Uh, McCarr is probably going to win in Norris eventually too. Uh, it, it's it's going to be a fun matchup. Like we've seen some real fun matchups with in these playoffs, especially with defensemen. So, um, Jim, what do you think about this one? Uh, Kale McCarr versus Victor Hedman. 
Yeah. Uh, Hedman, Hedman will do Hedman things. Uh, like you said, he's been there before. <laughs> he has the resume. Um, it, it's kind of like the old guard against the new guard, you know, the, the young McCarr coming in, the fantastic player. Um, you know, what bodes well is the lightning did a pretty good job in uh, containing Adam Fox, who's a you know pretty good defenseman in his own right, similar mm-hmm. to McCarr in, in many ways. He does have a lot of you know offensive prowess, so th- they have that going for him. They've they've seen that really good um, you know two way defenseman, and um, McCarr has been you know he's been hot in the playoffs, and they're going to have to deal with him, um, whether it's Hedman or you know of course the the forwards coming out to keep an eye on him. Uh, he's going to be a force to be reckoned with. So. You know, a big task for Tampa Bay if they want to get that third uh, Stanley Cup. Yeah, I mean, Kerry, you've watched McCarr uh, throughout the regular season into these playoffs. Uh, he's he's super young. He still has got tons of, of uh, stuff still to go in his career. Um, what do you think he'll have an impact? Will he have a similar impact as he did against the Oilers? Or will the Lightning be able to contain him? Yeah, because he they just sort of dropped the reins and let him go in that first round <laughs> series and he was all over the place. Um, and then in the second round, it seemed like he was sort of holding back those first couple of games. And then they I don't know what somebody said to him or if somebody, you know, bonked him on the head and say, hey, you know, get out there, get going. Um, and then against Edmonton, he was just electrifying again. And it's when he's going forward that. And this might sound weird, but that's when he is the best defenseman. If he's able to like get out there and fly around, he's going to get back. If he's holding back and like sitting back and that's mm-hmm. not his game, he's got to go forward. And it seems like he's way more comfortable defending when he's flying around the offensive zone. So <laughs> <laughs> it just seems like it gets him more into it. I don't know. It just, it might sound weird, but if you watch him in some of those, earlier games against St. Louis, he was just sort of holding back and he wasn't as effective. I mean, he was still, you know, he's still a fine defenseman, but he's so much better when those legs are churning and he's Mm -hmm. such a great skater and he can get, uh, uh, you know, get around and get to so many different areas and do so many different things all over the rink that once he, if he's flying around like that, uh, you know, look out because that's when he can, he can really nail you. I mean, we <laughs> talked about that one goal against Edmonton in the first game where they score and then he scores like nine seconds later. You can argue about the offside still went up on the mm-hmm. board. You know, that was such a huge play. And then for the rest of that game, he just locked everybody down. Mm-hmm. And I mean, he's going to have to do that. They just absolutely need him everywhere just because of they've just come to rely on it so much. And mm-hmm the unsung guy in that pairing is Devon Taves because yeah. <laughs> he's been spectacular defensively. He scored goals. I think he's got five goals too in the playoffs, but yeah. it's like <laughs> he scored two, but it's just um, that guy, you know, I've said this before. He forgives a lot of sins when McCarr gets stuck up there and he's, yeah. you know, he's just been really good in this series. And I think against an offense like this, it's going to be all hands on deck. You're going to need all of the pairings out there to be doing it, especially because they're going to need McCarr to, you know, step up on the offensive mm-hmm. side too. It's just, it'll be interesting to see if these guys play like 40 <laughs> minutes. So, <laughs> it's going to be hard I, I, to keep a guy like Hedman or a guy like McCarr off the ice. <laughs> well, they're both going to play over 20. I mean, I know McCarr's <laughs> played 25. I, I don't know. He's played a ton and Hedman, of course, played a ton. So um, let's talk about guys beyond that. I mean, you mentioned Devon Taves, but um, on the lightning side, if Zach Bogosian looked like a all world defenseman, a couple of those games, <laughs> uh, which is not normally, he's not normally that type of defenseman, but um, and then the avalanche they've had, contributions like you mentioned Byron having seven assists you got their defense I believe still leads the playoffs in scoring um you know that's going to be something the Lightning are going to have to deal with too um Jim what do you think about the matchup between the whole defense cores against each other um does anyone have an edge or is it pretty much the same well, I think the only the only edge the Lightning have is in goal um I think both defenses have done really well they have both um, excelled in blocking shots. I think I read something mm-hmm. about the avalanche. Uh, I don't know if it was like uh, average or in the last game had 21 blocks shots at some point, they have no problem, you know, sacrificing their body. Neither does the lightning. Um, they, they have both 
contained powerful offenses in the last series that they won. You know, obviously Edmonton, you know, has a couple pretty good guys on there that yeah. score a lot of <laughs> goals and um, they were pretty well negated for the most part. And, you know, the lightning did the same thing with, uh, you know, the New York Rangers. They, they really, you know, kept, you know, their big three Kreider and Panarin and um, Zibanejad um, well in check. And that, that was a big key to them winning the four games after they lost the first two, they will need to do, you know, that again, if they're going to have a chance to win this. Yeah, I, I think the defenses are pretty much even. Uh, in, I mean, they got both got stars. They both got pretty good depth on on both sides too. So yeah, I definitely agree with that. Um, Kerry, have anything to add to that? Uh, this matchup between the two defenses. Yeah, I just, I mean, I just think that guys like for Colorado uh, in particular. I mean, when Gerard goes down, um, he's such a you know, he plays so many minutes and he's such a anchor back there when he's out there. And for Bowen Byram, Josh Manson, two guys that have just really yeah. stepped up. And I mean, you know what you're going to get from Eric Johnson. I mean, if, if he does score a goal, awesome. I think he scored four <laughs> in his career in the playoffs, but you know that he's just going to be out there and with his massive giant wingspan cutting off a huge, you know, swaths of the ice. So they each do a little thing you know, some different things and uh, yeah, Makar and Taves are going to get the bulk of the minutes for sure. It's just that those other guys, they've been a lot better in the playoffs than they were in the regular season. Mm. They've been able to, you know, relax a little bit more when some of those guys are out there where during the regular season, there's been kind of the nervous, okay, let's just get through the next minute <laughs> here uh, <laughs> type of thing. But they haven't really done that in the playoffs. They've been so solid, you know, up and down. Yeah, they've given up some big numbers. You know, you're going to do that against Edmonton, but they still won every one of those games. And mm -hmm. uh, I just think that these teams defensively are so close, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> are so close to each other because it's not like it's just been a one-man show for Tampa either, mm -hmm. I, I, you know guys like Ryan McDonough are always going to be there and yeah. they've been in this situation before. So, you know, it's a, probably a little calmer in that uh, <laughs> locker room right now, just because, you know, they know exactly what it takes to do this. Yeah. that That's very true. I uh, looking now, I mean, defense, they're pretty, even you mentioned Jim, you mentioned the goaltending. This one's going to be a little bit over to the lightning side. I mean, not a little bit, probably a lot. Uh, Vasilevsky has been amazing again, these playoffs. It's like, he just becomes not saying he's not all worldly in the regular season, but it becomes even more in the playoffs. It just seems like it. Um, he can be average in the regular season and all of a sudden he's just the superstar in the playoffs and has some crazy stat in elimination games, like 0.992 save percentage, 0.25 <laughs> goals against average. He's just six shutouts. It's it's amazing what he does in these elimination games. Um, Jim, what do you think this matchup? Uh, Andre Vasilevsky versus Darcy Kemper. Uh, Kemper is 100%. They said he's 100% to go for game one. Um, what do you think this matchup will be? Uh, does Vasilevsky have that huge edge like it looks like on paper here? Yeah, I, I think he does. But I, you know, I think the thing is that, you know, he also has been a little bit human in, you know, a couple of, uh, you know, games in, in um, you know, at least the series with Toronto and a little bit with um, the Rangers as well. And I think he goes a little bit as how the rest of the lightning goes too. the, the fact that, you know, they came off, he might've had a little bit of rust after the layoff, you know, you know, facing shots in a game is facing, you know, it's different than facing them in, in practice, no matter who's shooting them at you. So there, there may have been a little bit of that. Um, the Rangers exploited what they saw was a weakness. I noticed that he worked very hard to correct it when they were going for his blocker side. I noticed in the last three games, he was going hard to the blocker when they were trying to set, you know, Zibanej up with that. So it's things like that, that he does and the, and the Tampa coaching staff do to put him, you know, in the situation where, you know, he can excel like that. I would expect him to, you know, you know, to do very well. And he, he could end up being with all the stuff that we've talked about, how close the offense and the defense is, he's going to have to be the difference maker, um, you know, for this team in order for them to win. 
Uh, definitely capable of it. <laughs> We've seen it many times, uh, time and time again. So um, carry on the avalanche side at Darcy Kemper um, didn't play all series long against the Edmonton Oilers that uh, Frank Hoos got the net um, after he, well, he didn't play the whole Kemper got hurt uh, and didn't play for most of that series. So Frank Hoos had to take the reins, did a really good job uh, and basically did good enough to have them go to the final Kemper's back. Uh, what do you think uh, he'll be in this series going against a superstar like Vasilevsky? Yeah, I mean, it's tough. Uh, if I'm John Cooper, I just tell Vasilevsky, hey, this is a game clinching or a series clinching game. Yeah, exactly. them for every game and then have them don't look at the newspaper or anything like that. <laughs> it's, like, um, it's, it's crazy. Yeah, he had that stinker in game one. Vasilevsky did. You know, I think they was like a six to two game or something. And then they went four out of the next five. So it's like, <laughs> okay, here we go. And he, uh, you know, he had some issues. Yeah, for sure. On that blocker side and he did remedy it. And it's a good thing because Nathan McKinnon lives over there on the power play. <laughs> so <laughs> that is a definite, uh, you know, piece of equipment that they're aiming at on every goalie every mm -hmm. night on the power play. Cause they're trying to set McKinnon up from, what I like to call Stamkos's office, that side <laughs> in that circle over there <laughs> on the left side. But um, I think definitely that Vasilevsky has the edge here. It's just that Kemper's been pretty good. And I, I don't think anybody's going to confuse those, those two. It's just that Kemper, you know, in his career, he's been pretty good despite, despite playing on some, mm. you know, stinkers of teams. But I, I mean, against, Tampa Bay at his career, 233 goals against, uh, what, a 920 save percentage? That ain't bad. You know, they won both mm. the games against him during the regular season. I think one was a shootout, though, which that ain't going to happen again, um, mm -hmm. well, at least till next regular season, but it's <laughs> at the <laughs> earliest. But, um, you know, so they know that they can get past Vasilevsky, but doing that in November is completely different mm. than doing that to him now. And yeah. I, I mean, I just think it's a huge edge for them. And, um, you know, we talked about how the defenses might be kind of a wash or maybe Avalanche have a little bit of an edge here or there or with this player or that player. But this is one spot that Tampa has to know. And they've known this for years, hmm. for at least the last few years. Let's just lean on this guy and mm -hmm. because he's going to do it and he's going to do it for us. So, I mean, it's a huge edge for them. Uh not just from the standpoint of, yeah, he's a really, really good goaltender, but he's a goaltender, you know, that's like one of Con Smythe and he's seen mm -hmm. all of this stuff before. So where Kemper is like, wow, we got to watch a lot of these <laughs> games on TV in Arizona. Like, this is really cool. Uh, you know, you just don't know how they're going to react that first time in the finals where you aren't worrying about that at all. Um, yeah. You know, in the on the Tampa side. So they're going to need him. He's going to have to be big. I mean, this is the best team that they've played so far, uh, which makes total sense. It's the Stanley Cup final, but yeah. <laughs> this is the best team that they've seen so far. And it's easily the best goaltender they've seen. And even though they beat him a couple of times during the regular season, I think this is, this is just a different animal for him. Well, playoffs are a different animal for the Lightning, it seems. <laughs> Regular season, like John Cooper's never won a, a Jack Adams award for best coach, yet he has two cups and uh, could be of a third one. So uh, it's it, it's the playoffs. Playoffs are so different. And uh, so we'll see what happens. Um, let's get to some X factors in this uh, series. Just a couple, guy, couple guys that um, you think could step up. We have so many guys have stepped up for these both these teams, but who do you think could potentially be that in this series? Uh, we'll start with you, Jim. I'm going to go look for one of the guys again. It would be Nick Paul. Um, after those two big goals, uh, you know that he had in Toronto, um, good defensively, a little quiet on the offensive end. That may have been a little bit by design too. Like I said, they're they're you know they're not necessarily looking for him, you know, to score. It would be also nice if maybe Anthony Sorelli. Um, got a goal, but, or two, mm -hmm. but then again, you know, he's there to, you know, do some other things as well as Kalorn and, and some of those other guys. I think those are the big X factors. If they got a few goals from them, it'd be great, <laughs> but they really, they really need those guys to, you know, step up 
and, um, you know, hound and, and harass, uh, you know, Colorado's big guns as much as possible. Yeah, if they're able to just be that matchup too, and if they're not scoring, that's that's a big thing too, um, shutting them down. Uh, Kerry, what do you think? An X factor for the Avalanche in this series? Yeah, I mean, we just talked about the goaltending here, and I mean, Colorado, if they're going to win this series, they're going to need some of those like you know those greasy goals, and that's Gabriel mm-hmm. Landeskog for sure. He lives in, <laughs> <laughs> he lives in the blue paint, <laughs> and they are going to need him just to kind of be a present, whether he's, you know, knocking in rebounds or tipping pucks in, or just even getting in Vasilevsky's way. Like Mm. he's very, very good down there in, you know, standing in front of the net. And I think that's just, they're going to need a guy like him and Valerie Nachuskin does this too, Mm. just to make sure that, you know, teams try this and it's so hard, but just to try and make life a little more difficult for Vasilevsky and, Landis Gogg's the, you know, emotional leader of this team. He's a big physical presence out there. He's, you know, he's scoring goals again, got a great year. And like, I think he's just maybe the most important player for them, just as far as kind of setting a tone by just standing Mm. for planting himself in front of that net, because they're going to have to get some ugly ones to get by these guys, because you're not just going to snipe them, you know, from the point, the whole game, you know, every night, it's yes, just not going to yeah. happen. So I just think guys like that, the more of the, like the physical dudes, you know, the four checker guys like Landis Gog and Nachushkin are just going to have to be vital in this, whether they're scoring goals or not, they, mm. you know, they've just got to kind of set that sort of four check tone and, you know, just try and get in Vasilevsky's way a little bit, or else it's going to mm. be a pretty short series for them. <laughs> Yeah, well, that's a good point because Vasilevsky, he's just so good. You need to get in his uh, his kitchen. Uh, you need to get get him. Uh, I mean, that even doesn't sometimes doesn't get him off his game. So uh, we'll see. <laughs> uh, let's get to some. You know, this is a, this is going to be a tough series to predict, but uh, we'll start with you, Jim. Uh, the Lightning will win this series if if they can come out strong and take uh, at least one game in Colorado. I'm going to be kind of curious to see how the Avalanche deal with the long rest. They did Mm -hmm. pretty well the first time when they swept Nashville and they came in and they beat St. Louis in the first game, but St. Louis is not Tampa. Um, (laughs) the, the, the lightning, (laughs) the lightning need to, you know, take advantage of that. They need to, um, set the tone and get on them early if they do that and I, they can take um, a game, um, at least one game in Colorado, I think that will be, um, you know, a good path for them to get that third Stanley Cup in a row. Yeah, that, that's, I mean, they're on a roll right now. And uh, going from a six and then, you know, a couple of days off, get some rest. And, and, but the abs have been off for what, almost a week. It'll be almost over a week by the time it'll be, um, Wednesday. So, uh, Carrie, the avalanche will win, uh, this series. If, um, yeah, Jim, you're totally right. St. Louis is not Tampa. That's, <laughs> that's for sure. Um, <laughs> but anyways, I, I just think Colorado just has to keep the foot on the gas. I, uh, you know, you, they came out, scored five goals in the first period of that first game against Nashville. Boom. Came out against St. Louis, won that game. They ended up losing in overtime in the second game. But, you know, just getting out to that start after this, you know, short rest or long rest, excuse me. You know, they had a little bit shorter rest going in against Edmonton. There was 14 goals scored in that first game. So, it's <laughs> like, they just have as, – as long as they keep the foot on the gas and just say, we're getting 45 shots – you guys could you guys do whatever you want. We're taking 45 shots. And we're going to try and score five. Like mm. that's what they're doing. It seems like, and they are flying with so much confidence right now. I don't know if the break really causes them to slow down because I don't know. I don't know if a guy like McKinnon will let them slow, <laughs> <laughs> slow down. He's just been on a total mission this entire postseason. So they absolutely have to keep that keep playing that game if they're if they change at all it just seems like you know it takes a like takes away from some of those guys that you know feast off of that that high pace that high octane let's get out and fly I mean that first game against Edmonton 
it looked like you were watching a tennis match just back and forth. <laughs> it was crazy. And that yeah. like, you know, people even during that game said, Oh, this is Edmonton's game. This is how they want to play. And I was <laughs> like, no, I don't know if this is the right idea for them. <laughs> you know, it ends up being eight to six. So if, as long as they just keep up that tempo, like that, they play a lot better when they're playing faster and mm. uh, they're not, I don't think they're as good in a grinded out like three to one game or, a, you know, anything yeah. like that. I think, I think they want it to be, you know, five to three, seven to four, yeah. um, things like that, because they know they're going to, they, or they feel like we're going to get at least four and we don't think you're going to be able to score five on us. You yeah. know, like that's just sort of the way that they're going. And I mean, they've only lost two games. Both of them have been at home. Um, mm. Would it surprise me if Tampa took one of those games in Colorado? No, because it's, I mean, they're a good team. <laughs> they're a really good yeah. team. It's, I mean, it's just, I, it's harder. It's been harder for teams over the last few years. You got to win that first game. St. Louis did yeah. it, but that second game, it seems like, I don't know if it's the altitude or what, but it seems like teams are just mm. a little bit more sluggish in that second game up here. And um, so if they can come in and take that first one, that'll be huge for Tampa. But I, I mean, if Colorado's got to come out with both of them for them, just because mm. it, I don't, I mean, I think this is going to be a pretty good series. I hope it is. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I said it, that it about should. the Edmonton <laughs> series and we've been sitting here not doing anything for a week. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I just think Colorado has to keep that tempo up, has to keep that tempo going. And if, I mean, that's the easiest way to shake off rust is just go as fast as yeah. you can. And yeah. no, I think they've got to do that. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's going to be, I hope it's, it's longer than that Edmonton, uh, Tam Edmonton uh, series, because I wanted that to go longer. It was, it was fun. Um, and, but the thing about the lightning is I, I, I said this um, to my dad the other day that, they seem to be able to play either style. They can play the run and gun. They can play the shutdown game. They just seem to be able to adjust. And if the Avs want to play a certain game, they can probably play it too. So it's going to be interesting to see how all this plays out. So let, let's get to some final predictions. What do you think? Who's going to win the Stanley cup? Uh, Jim, who's got it this year? Ah, <sighs> I hate to say this. <laughs> <laughs> I Colorado is just too hot. Uh, I, I think it, it pains me to say it. I'd love to see him do a three peat. Would it surprise me if they did, you know, did it? No, but I think it's going to be avalanche and six. Six. All right. Avalanche um, not want to get to a game seven, even if it's no. at home. <laughs> yeah. no. If they, they get to a game seven, six it's over. <laughs> okay. Yeah. They play the game on the moon. Uh, you do not want to get into a game seven with, with Tampa. They throughout that they just find find a way, you know, to win. So um, I'm if I'm a betting man, I would go Avalanche in six. But <laughs> you never know. I Carrie, what do you think? Uh, Stanley Cup this year, who's got it? Um, I gosh, I, I love a dynasty <laughs> as much as the next guy, uh, but I just I really think at like Jim said that Colorado is just. I mean, they are blazing right now. They're just tearing through everything and it's just hard. And I mean, I totally agree. If it, if it goes to, I think Colorado's going to win the series. If it goes seven games, I don't think they will. <laughs> this is really, you know, when you're playing Tampa, like seriously, it's a race to three. You cannot let them get to yeah. three. You know, like even if you're ahead three to two and they win that next game, you're screwed. It just seems like because <laughs> of how they play in those like series clinching games. They just yeah. they need to score two goals. Just score two in those clinching games. You're probably yeah, going to win. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and it's, I mean, you don't want to get to that point. That's why, like, the quick start for Colorado is huge. Coming out ahead 2 nothing when the series goes to Florida is huge. And it's just for that reason because you can't say that, Oh, wow. He's been really good in those clinching games. A couple of those. And he, no, he does it every time now. Like yeah. Vasilevsky does. Just, <laughs> he does it every time. It's like on his resume. So, <laughs> it's. Uh, I mean, I just think that Colorado's really flying around right now. Nathan McKinnon has been talking about getting to this point forever. And he has just, I mean, it has been 150 miles an hour. The instant one of his blades touches the ice, the entire playoffs for all 14 games. 
And I don't know. I mean, they've got two sweeps under their belt. I don't think they sweep this team, but I think uh, I'm, you know, I'm with Jim. I think they win it in six. I think mm. if they can get up, uh, man, I mean, I, I hope they play six, six or seven games. Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> just cause I want to see it. But I, I just think that, you know, they're red hot right now. And uh, I mean, everybody is firing. Uh, it's not, it's not just the, you know, they're superstars, even though McKinnon and McCarr are, have probably been two of the best players in the entire playoffs or the entire postseason, um, but they're getting it from a lot of different places. And I think that makes the difference. Tampa's good at yeah. that too. Um, so it, like Jim said, if, if Tampa wins this, will I be just flabbergasted? No, like I won't <laughs> be surprised at all. Like, I've watched hockey the last two years. I'm not going to be surprised if they do it again. So I just think that Colorado is the better team right now going into this, uh, into this series. And, you know, you've got the experience that Tampa has too, that they fall back on. So it'll be interesting to see how they come out in that first game because Colorado likes to set the tone early. They like, they want to take the lead in the first period. They barely ever lose if they are leading after the first period. So, like, that's their jam is let's yeah. just jump out first, um, come and get us. And, I mean, I don't think Tampa has a problem playing that game. It's just I just think Colorado is – they're on fire right now. Yeah. Well, I'm I'm gonna change. I'm gonna say so I could say I'm right if the Lightning do win. I'm gonna say the Lightning are <laughs> in seven. So, <laughs> just for the fact that I could say that. But uh, yeah, I I do. I mean, Colorado. This is going to be a fun series. I think this will go six or seven. Um, who wins it? I mean, it's really up in the air. But uh, they're both playing well. They're both on rolls. I mean, Lightning have won the last four. So I mean, they're on a roll. They know how to play in these games. They know how to play in a final. So. I wouldn't, like you both said, won't be surprised the Lightning win. So, um, but the Avalanche have just as good as any to win too. So, I mean, they're both going to be, I mean, betting, I wouldn't bet on this series because I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> probably wrong either way. But uh, yeah, it's going to be fun to watch. Uh, thanks, Jim. Thanks, Gary, for coming on the show. And you'll see both these guys on the post-game shows too after the games. Uh, we'll be talking about every game after this, these ones. And it's going to be fun to see what comes up comes up uh, throughout this series. I think it's going to be really fun to watch. Thanks everyone for watching uh, this preview. Uh, thanks for watching all the previews and all the post game shows uh, that we have on the YouTube channel. We really appreciate it. Um, make sure to comment below on anything. And thanks for commenting on all those videos. Anyway, um, we'll see you in the post game. Uh, we won't have any more previews. This is the last one, but uh, <laughs> we'll, we'll see you in the post game uh, in um, after game one.